Hi, Paul Beckwith. Water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. I don't know if you remember that old saw or phrase, you know, applying to, you know, if you're adrift in the middle of the ocean, you know, your ship sunk, you're in an inflatable uh, raft, and, uh, you know, which hopefully your ship has, uh, post-Titanic, uh, then, um, yeah, you can't drink the seawater. It dehydrates your body, you know, you'll die very quickly. So we have these, um, the, you can get a membrane with a hand pump and you pump away and the salt gets stuck in the membrane and you can get fresh water from it. Make sure you have one of those gizmos. Um, since I'm talking about water, I, you know, um, it's, uh, you know, you might want to get a sip yourself. Or have you ever tried that, that um, trick where you, you take hot water and you rub it on somebody's uh, palm that's asleep? Anyway, I, does that really work? I don't know. I've, I mean, I haven't had able to get it. I wasn't able to get it to work with my kids as they were young. But uh, anyway, for every degree Celsius rise in temperature, the air can hold 7% more water vapor. As the air rises and cools, water vapor condenses into, is into, condenses into droplets, forming clouds and releases energy to fuel storms. This is a review. I've talked about this just in, a, in you know, one of the recent videos. So this is showing real-time data on total precipitable water. So it doesn't mean it's going to rain necessarily, but it's capable of raining. You can notice these... So these are the high areas, of course, in the hottest areas, bracketing the equator. You know, what time of year is it? Well, it's just north of the equator, so you know that it's got to be going into the, the spring or summer in the northern hemisphere. This is May 23rd. As we go to June, July, and August, this, the sun moves higher up, and these bands uh, move up also, and they track the seasonal nature of the sun. Notice these fingers though coming up and you can see this finger coming up here and it supplies a lot of water to this region and this is the type of thing that happened you know all of this water was coming up the image for you know April and May brought it up higher we had massive flooding in Ontario and Quebec. Get some videos on that so you can see what's happening as the temperature gradient decreases from the equator to the Arctic and the Arctic is warmer than the water is making its way further up into the Arctic. And it's getting a lot wetter up there and uh, that's warming things quite a bit as well. Okay, so let's talk about the jet streams and this is I'm sure you all remember August 13th, 20, 2003. If you're in Europe, you remember this. It was damn hot. This is one of the worst days in the extensive long duration European heat wave that killed greater than 70,000 people. 50,000 in France, I believe. If this happened today, these numbers would be much lower because there's buildings that are air conditioned and centers and they have an infrastructure. The human response would, you know, basically protect the very young and the very old and, uh, you know, ongoing heat waves would be dealt with a lot better. But this was a surprise when it happened, killed a lot of people. The root cause is a wavy and stuck persistent jet stream ridge. So you can see the jet stream between is the is running between the blue areas, which are the colder areas and the warmer areas. So it'll go sort of like this, right? And there's this business going on, you know, so you can kind of track it around and there's a little loop here, which isn't moving that much. And you can see this red area where there's a massive heat wave. And this was just sitting here for many days. Um, you know, in Canada, you could see it sitting over here, you know, over Manitoba, Saskatchewan, having a lengthy heat wave. So it's all in the jet streams and how they, how the, their patterns as to what extreme weather events we get. Again, this is climate reanalyzer to remind you. Okay, so what did we have in, in Ottawa? We had 
record rainfall in April and early May, record water levels and flooding, also human error, okay? Dumping of water from northern reservoirs. This is called a climo climograph, not a climatograph or a climaxograph, but a climograph, okay? So the rainfall in, sorry to uh, American audiences, but this is precipitation in millimeters per month. 64.8 in April, 70, you just Google your city, Google your city and climograph and have a look at it. Go, first of all, Google, Google images, go to Google images, then Google your city, climograph, you'll get something like this, have a look at it, it gives you the, the, the typical highs and lows and wet days and wind speeds and sunlight hours, minimum temperatures, maximum temperatures, all of this stuff for your city. So you can know what's sort of normal or what's the long-term average. So 64.8 millimeters in April, 76.8 in May. We had over 150 in April, more than double normal. We had almost 120 in the first week of May, right? Too, just too much, couldn't go anywhere, ground saturated. River systems were inundated we had floods exceeding one in a hundred years. It peaked in Ottawa on May 6th, okay? But it peaked, uh, anyway, they, they, they dumped reservoir water. I have, I've shown this in some other videos. Record water levels in Lake Ontario and St. Lawrence River are ongoing. You know, here we are in June and we're still at peak levels in Lake Ontario. Lots of Centre Island in Toronto is, is underwater. Um, and if you let too much water out of Lake Ontario, which is the Americans are saying, let water out, let water out. Our cottages are getting flooded in New York and other places. If they let out too much water, then the water levels of the St. Lawrence would spike up and we'd nail Montreal. So this is a, a, <coughs> a triage. You know, the communities that have the most power and sway and that can say, okay, they have a louder voice and more clout so they can, you know, you can... So basically, you know, I mean, it's like survival of the fittest, right? Or the, the, the richest, I guess. I mean, they say, okay, well, you can't flood out our houses. You've got to flood out the poorer region's houses. Triage, right? And flooding. Natural disasters always have a natural and human component. In Ottawa's case, the human control of reservoir levels and water dumping was a large factor. Water came in like a tide on this particular day. And it spiked up on the gauge and, uh, you know, because they dumped water from the reservoir. So to call it an act of God, I don't think, yeah, act, of, act of stupidity. Um, okay, this is showing the jet streams. Go to Earth Null School. This is showing the jet stream waviness on May 6th. And you can see this pattern here. Look at this pattern here. Now the large omega, the Greek letter omega is like this. And the small Greek letter omega is like a curvy W. This is, these are two troughs here. This is British Columbia. This is Quebec and Ontario on the east coast of North America. This is in central. Fort McMurray is up here, 30, 35 degrees Celsius. No rain, super dry. Remember what happened a year ago with the massive fires? You know, here we're getting record rainfalls and flooding. Okay, this pattern's persistent and being stuck, and we're still, it's called the omega block, okay? And so this determines, this little little curvy pattern doesn't move, um, and we get this huge flooding disaster in Ontario and Quebec, one in a hundred year event. This is showing the sea level pressures on this particular day, you can see the low pressure area here, low pressure area here, high pressure area here. Remember the jet stream is coming down, is, is like this omega block, okay? This is showing wind and total precipitable water. So you can see some, some of the blue areas here, blue areas here, doesn't look any, not, looks like, you know, big deal. You know, it was a big deal. Um, you know, you can see, you know, there's warm waters of the Gulf Stream are carrying a lot of moisture up and it created a gear and this gear just kept moving and inundated us. So imagine when the jet streams are non-existent or extremely weak, you know, these can these patterns just flood out places? Whereas the next door, it's, uh, you know, drought. 
I think so. Here's, uh, you know, we're getting these events. So we had straight line winds go knock down a bunch of trees in Moscow, you know, killing, uh, you know, a number of people. We, we have, uh, you know, these events sort of just happening. So here's this island in New Brunswick. Okay, and here's a causeway, and all of these trees were taken out. Heavy wind split the power poles in half, tore roofing tiles off the building. Damage was over a wide geographic area, not characteristic of tornadoes. There wasn't a tornado there. It was straight line winds, not associated with rotation. You know, another term is derechos. These things can cross the continent and be massive in the north-south extent and cause huge amounts of damage as they sweep across. So it appears the wind gusts may have reached 190 kilometers an hour. Up to 20 power poles fell, and these were encased in concrete and cement on the bridge, so they're harder to replace. So obviously, you know, maybe we need just thicker poles, right? Maybe we need to build transmission lines more durable to withstand these events. Maybe we need to bury them in cities. But then, of course, if the ground's saturated and flooding's occurring, they may short out. This storm, the New Brunswick storm, <coughs> you can see the jet, what the jet stream is doing above this region. Um, you know, and there were wind gusts created. So there's, it's part of this whole system here. So what's gonna happen? I mean, we gotta grow food and we gotta eat. So, you know, and drink, not just water, right? Um, we got, so, so it looks like, according to the, this drought severity index, PDSI, which is a standard, areas, many areas get drier, the purples and the pinks and the oranges, anything greenish or bluish gets wetter. You know, there's not a lot of areas that are protected to get wetter. You know, in a much warmer climate, the continents are much, much drier, according to this, although we'll still have these gears circulating around dumping. I mean, this is just a, from a model. How good is a model, right? Many, many farming regions are expected to get much drier. Um, so this, uh, you know, how, like growing food is going to become uh, problematic. So uh, sorry for the fan. I can't do anything about it, but I'll just keep going for a couple minutes here. So, procrastination to action. How many climate Pearl Harbors do we need in order for the world to wake up and say, hey, we got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. We're, we're breaking up. We're burning up. You know, what is going to drive serious government action? It's the public. Bad things must happen to regular people in rich countries that have sway. The media must report them as being a result of climate change, requires a change in world view. The problem is, is the noise gets louder and louder, you know. Every time there's a terrorist uh, act, as bad as it is, it's only, it's not a huge number of people compared to climate change, you know, can take out half the human race. All of the human race, I doubt it, but lots of it. Over what time period? Well, who knows, but we have to eat, right? We lose sea ice if we have trouble growing crops and it's going to have huge, it's just going to break up everything and then countries turn inward and, you know, uh, basically people can lose track of the root cause of what's going on. So here is where this is a possible scenario. You know, if you don't, if if you're going in a certain direction, eventually you'll reach where that's where you're heading. Unless you change course, right? We have to change course. And I've talked about how in many videos. But if we have an ice free Arctic in September 2020, extremely rapid warming acceleration, permafrost thaw, methane surges, mega drought in the US, more Katrina like superstorms, heat waves accelerating sea level rise, ice sheet collapses, Amazon rainforest collapse, food price spikes. You know, owing to past neglect in the face of the plainest warnings, we have entered upon a period of danger. The area of procrastination, half measures, is over. We're entering a period of consequences. We're in this period of consequences. We've already seen some spike in the price um, in uh, cause it leading to Arab Spring. 